Well, how do the chums decide? Captain of the Steve, and I'm back with some Starfield. Heck yes. So the other day, I did a video on whether there would be transitions from taking off from planet into space and then landing back down on planet. Would there be a seamless transition like in No Man's Sky? Or would there be animations like we're seeing on the screen right now? Now it turns out that there's been an article and an interview with IGN where Todd Howard says no, no that will not be a thing, you cannot just transition from planet into space, there will be a cutscene, there will be an animation like I picked up on inside of the trailer. So let's go and have a look at that article shall we people, heck yes. So here on is this article, Starfield does not let you fly seamlessly from space to planet, that's really just not that important, <laughs> is what he says. This is what he said. That is what that's what he said. It really isn't that important. OK, so in Skyrim, when you enter into a city or into a town, is there a cutscene, an animation of you opening up the doors to go in and a bit of a loading? So it's all hidden behind the scenes. Or do you just seamlessly walk into the town? What's better? What's better? You know, when you open your vault to come out of your vault and go into the world, is there a lovely cutscene? Probably the first time you do it, but no, not afterwards. No, because that would, be, that would just be immersion breaking, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the seamless flight. Yeah. We'll just give them animations. We'll just give them animations, people. So yeah, it just, just gets me. Here's another quote down here. So yeah, I saw a different need for Star, Starfield, explaining that the time spent making that feature work didn't offer the payoff the team was looking for in terms of quality. Righto, okay, well let's just turn back the pages of history and we'll go back to how games used to be with loading screens and animation, shall we? Freaking mind-blowing stuff. Okay, maybe we've been a little bit spoiled inside of the verse of No Man's Sky where things are a little bit different, but I'll show you why it matters. So here we go, we're in space, we're in Starfield, in space! Wrong joypad, but we're in space! Okay, right, and now I'm going to hit on up the console, boom! Brings up the galactic map of the where I want to be inside of this solar system. Right, let's select a planet to go and land on, shall we? Right, okay, so my elliptical is here. We want to go there. That's where we want to go. Animation. Little cutscene of me flying in and landing. It might not be this long. This might be the first time you land on a planet or something. Maybe it does all this lovely cinematic. And maybe there will just be this part of the animation, let's say. You know, have you landed on side of planet? I mean, I can't see the structure in the background or anything there, even though we've landed near to a structure. Then you walk around on the planet. Had enough? OK, right. Well, go back on your ship. Walk all the way into it. Lovely. Get back to your console. Hit where you want to go. I want to go into space. And you take off. And you you're back into space. Brilliant, lovely. But say if I only want to go, maybe, I don't know, over the top of a cliff and round the corner a bit on the same planet, maybe look for a lovely lake or something. Well, now I'm back up in space. Right, go back into cockpit mode. Brilliant, lovely, press that button. Bring on up the galactic map, lovely jubbly. Select the planet that I need to go to, which could be the one that I just freaking left. Brilliant, awesome, select that. Now go and select somewhere else on the planet. And yeah, we're on our way, chicka boom. I want to go to that giant crater over there or to that new town, lock it in, boom, little animation of you landing, lovely jubbly, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what you're going to get all the time. Whereas in No Man's Sky, in No Man's Sky you're on a planet, you go over to your ship, you get inside of your ship and you can take on off and you can fly pretty much wherever you want on the planet. You can just do a low orbit flight, you can fly over that mountain, you can see what's over there and you can say... Actually, do I want to land there or not? Or you might be on your way there and say, Oh look, there's a tasty little pond there. That'd be perfect for a lovely little outpost. Yes, have my own little fishery. Why the fudge not? Yeah, so I'm going to land there. I'm going to land there. We're going to have a little look. Oh, look at that lovely sunset. I might stop for a moment for a photo or something. Whatever. Anyhow, get back in your ship after you've had enough. Take on off. And this time, if I wanted to, I could fly out into space. Now I'm thinking, why is it that Bethesda doesn't just say, right, okay, well, rather than when you just take off, it takes you straight to space. What about if we just gave you two options? One for flying with inside the planet's atmosphere and one for going into space. And then it could have the animation if you go into space. If you choose to fly in low orbit, it just gives you a different mechanic. You know, like the mechanic you've got when you're flying on your freaking backpack and flying around in the planet's atmosphere? Like that, but in your ship. Yes, 
uh, you know, because otherwise you've got animations all the time. And maybe when you're flying around inside of the atmosphere, if you go too high, it comes up and says, do you want to engage your thrusters to exit atmosphere? Yes, boom, then the animation kicks off and you're in space. So at least we've got low flight orbit of some kind, you know, so we can actually fly over the landscapes, maybe dash a couple of big animals with some freaking fire. But anyhow, there you go. And now I'm flying to a completely different planet in No Man's Sky. You see how seamless that is? That's the difference, you know. That's the whole thing of opening up a door and to a building and you used to get old loading screens before you actually loaded in the interiors. That's, that's, the, that's the stuff of yesterday, Bethesda. Yesterday! Yeah, anyhow, so here we go, I'm landing. And you saw there, I was going to land by the lake, but then I saw a structure, changed my mind. We're not going to get that choice inside of a frickin', what's it called, Starfield? We're just going to have to choose another spot and hope we get lucky. Yeah. Well, there we go, people. That's No Man's Sky. If you haven't played No Man's Sky and you're waiting for Starfield to appear, give it a go. It's had loads of updates and it's freaking awesome. I mean, we have got an actual page in here called the Discoveries page. Imagine if this was what No Man's Sky was. You select your planet, OK? You select where you want to land on that planet in that system and then you just got an animation. You appear there. I mean, that would take all the enjoyment out. Right, anyway, more Starfield news because Todd Howard spoke to IGN. Let's hear what he had to say about procedural generation and planets. I imagine you're going to have to procedurally generate a lot of those. Yeah, look, I mean, we, we're pretty aware you throw that out near the end. People are go, what did you just say? <laughs> um, and then they'll have a lot of uh, questions on how that works. And we will probably deep dive into that in the future. Here's here's how we pull it off and how it feels. We, we ask ourselves in the games that, that we love to make and that we love to play and what's great about video games, and you're going to step into these universes. You go through in your head all the things you would want to do in a game like that, and we try to say yes as much as possible. It was always for us, we like those kind of experiences. Could we eventually do one in space? Because you know that's going to involve, in the way that we would want it, going to a lot of planets and being able to explore them in some way. So we did, we do a lot of procedural generation, but I would, I would keep in mind that we've always done that. Right. And it's a big part of Skyrim in terms of questing and some other things we do. We generate landscape using procedural systems. And so we've always kind of worked on it. And a planet by itself, if you think about it, is sort of in a game concept, just one planet is infinitely big if you're going to do it in some realistic fashion. So once you're dealing with scale like that and procedural systems, the difference between, say, one planet that has some variation on it and a hundred planets or a thousand planets, it's actually not that big of a leap, if that makes sense, yeah. once you have good systems working for that. But I should also add that we have done more handcrafting in this game like content-wise than any game we've done. We're over 200,000 lines of dialogue. So we still do a lot of handcrafting. And if people just want to do like what they're used to in our games and follow a main quest and do the quest lines, you're, you're going to see what you kind of expect from us. But then you have this whole other part of, well, I'm just going to wander this planet and it's going to provide some gameplay and some random content and those kind of things kind of like a Daggerfall would right. uh, if you go way back. You know, there are a lot of ice balls in space, so that was one of our big design considerations on this game, is what's fun about an ice ball? And it's okay sometimes if ice balls aren't, you know, the, it is what it is. You want to go land on that weird planet, check it out, and build an outpost, and live your life there, and watch the sunset because you like the view of the moons there. Like, we go for it. We love that stuff. Well, you know, similarly, uh, I wanted to ask... So, although it was a concern of mine, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I'm still going to enjoy this game and exploring this universe and trying out the story and things. I'm still going to be getting this game, but I tell you what, for Todd Howard not to realise just how immersion breaking it is and the effect it may have for mods, say for VR, could be quite immense. So, there we go. That's my thoughts and feelings. Please give me yours inside the comments. And until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again! Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.